basic rules of differentiation. Rule number one, which I call the power rule, that if y is equal to some function of x that has a power n, then when we differentiate this function, which we call y prime, or if you like, dy over dx, we have n x to the power n minus 1. What the rule is saying is this. You have some function x with a power. To differentiate this function, what you simply do is, you multiply the coefficient of this function of x, which is in this case is 1, multiply it by n, so that's so 1, so there's a 1 here, so 1 times n is n. And then you subtract 1 from the power of n. So that becomes n minus 1. So when you do this to a function that is algebraic or a polynomial function, as the case may be, what you have done is you have just differentiated the function. And the value you are going to get here is the same value as you would have gotten if you had applied the first principle in, differenti in differentiating the function. For example, if y is a function x to the power what? 2, the function x to the power 2, then y prime, if you differentiate this function, y prime, by power rule, what do you get? The power here, n, is 2. And the, not, the value here by x is just 1, right? So, by the power rule, we multiply 2 and 1. So, 2 times 1 gives us 2x. Then we subtract 1 from the power. So, 2 minus 1. And that gives us what? That gives us 1. So, we just write it as what? 2x. So, this is the derivative of the function y equal to x squared by the power rule. If you differentiate the same function from first principle, the value of the derivative you're going to have still coincides with what? With 2x. Rule number two. If y is equal to c f of x, so if your function f of x is being multiplied by some constant c, then when you differentiate this function, you see you simply have c times the derivative of x. What this simply means is that if a function multiplies, if, if a constant c, c is a constant now, multiplies a function, what it really is saying is that you can take the function out and just differentiate the function of x itself. You can take the constant out rather and differentiate the function of x itself. For example, if y is equal to say 3, x to the power 3, and you wish to differentiate this function, y prime, of course the power rule can be applied here directly. But let us try to demonstrate rule number two. The constant here is three, c three. So we can keep three out and just differentiate x cube. That was saying and differentiate x cube. And what would that be? That would be three is out. Differentiate x cube using the power rule. What do you get? The number by x is one. So three times one is three x. We subtract one from the power of three. So three minus one is what is two. So that 3 times 3x three squared becomes what? 9x squared. And you have differentiated by that rule. The next rule which we wish to look at is what we call the sum slash difference rule. And what does it say? It says that if y is a function f of x plus it could be minus another function g of x. Then if we differentiate this function which means to differentiate f of x plus g of x to differentiate that. This rule says that all we have to do is differentiate x, f separately, plus we differentiate g separately. And if what you have there is a negative sign, it follows accordingly. For example, if I have a function y equal to x cubed, plus x squared and I want to perform the y dx I want to differentiate that what I mean what will it be you simply differentiate the terms individually that's all so if I differentiate x cubed what do I get from the power rule I get 3x squared plus if I differentiate x squared by the power rule what do we get we get 2x and that is it so if we had a, a, a minus sign here here will just be minus and the rule will still hold true for that. The next rule number four, which I want to state is that if y is equal to sine x, so here this is a trigonometric function, then when you differentiate sine x, what you get is 
cosine of what x in our subsequent classes we shall use the 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 first principle rule to show that the derivative of sine x is cos x so you stay tuned for that so when you differentiate a function sine x its derivative is nothing but what cos x and rule number five i wish to state here is that if y is function cosine of x cos x for example then when you differentiate cos x what you get is minus sine x so wherever you see cos x when you differentiate cos x its derivative gives you negative what sine x the next rule i wish to state here is that if y is exponential x an exponential function of x then when you differentiate that function the function does not change so if y is exponential x then the derivative of exponential x is nothing but what exponential x the seventh rule i wish to state is what we call the product rule so if y is a product f of x of two functions for example then what happens when you differentiate this function y prime what we get is this the first function is f of x you write f of x the second function is g of x you differentiate g of x plus the second function again is g of x you differentiate the first function f prime of x what have we done here you keep this function differentiate this plus you now differentiate this other one and keep this other one constant that's what i have done here for example if we have a function y equal to 2x cos x the first thing we ask ourselves is do we see product rule from here the answer is obviously yes because the first function here is 2x and the second function here is what is cosine of what x so if we apply the, the rule which we have just explained here what do we get y prime becomes what the first function is what 2x times we now differentiate the second function and what do we get when we do that we said when you differentiate cos x you get negative sine x so th this gives us negative sine x plus we kept 2x constant initially now we keep cos x constant we now keep cos x constant times we now differentiate 2x and what do we get we get 2 how the power here is 1 so 1 times 2 is 2 1 minus 1 is 0 so x to the power 0 is 1 if we tidy it up carefully what do we get we get minus 2x sine x plus what 2 cos x and that is the derivative of that function the last one we want to state here is what we call the quotient rule so if y is equal to a function say f of x divide by another function say g of x so what happens so when we differentiate we have y prime is equal to what the second function down g of x you keep it constant you differentiate the first function which is what f prime of x minus you now keep the second function you now keep the second function g f of x rather and differentiate the function below g prime of x and divide by the square of the function below which is what g of x all squared so if we have f of x over g of x this is what they call a quotient that is a ratio of two functions that is one function divides another function so what do we do to differentiate the function you, you write the down the, the function below first so we have g of x f prime of x minus f of x g prime of x divide by what g of x all squared so let us take an example to illustrate this if we have the function say y equal to tan x how do we differentiate this function first and foremost we know that the tan of the tangent of an angle is the ratio of what sine x over what over cos x so this is already in the form we just described f of x over g of x if you like you can see it's in the form u over v where your u is sine x and your v is what cos x so that being the case so if we say so let the up function 
be u if you like so let u be what sin x then what is u prime u prime is what u prime simply means du dx so differentiate u with respect to x that gives us what cos x so you know if v is a function below if v is cos x then if you differentiate v with respect to x what do you get you get negative what sin x so by the quotient rule we said y prime is what we said g of x the function below in this case the function below is what cos x so in terms of u and v you know this is the same thing as f of x over g of x sometimes for simplicity we simply use u and v to denote them so in terms of u and v the formula says v u prime minus u v prime divided by what v squared so if we, have, if we make use of this notation what do we get our v is cos x which is a function below our u prime u prime is cos x again minus u u is sin x our v prime is what v prime is negative sin x negative sin x divided by v squared what's our v v is cos x so divided by what cos squared x so if we tidy it up we get cos x cos x is what cos squared x the minus times minus is plus sine squared x divided by what cos squared x from our trigonometry we know that cos squared x plus sine squared x is 1 so this gives us 1 over cos squared x again we know that 1 over cos x is what is sec x 1 over cos x we know that 1 over cos x is nothing but what sec x therefore 1 over cos squared x will be what 1 will be what sec squared x therefore if y is equal to the tangent of x then y prime is nothing but what sec squared x so every other form every other function we we encounter we encounter in mathematics you know we differentiate them using one or a combination of these rules as we go further into the lecture we shall encounter more problems and more techniques shall be unraveled which we should we can use in getting the derivative of every function bye